computer, lights. Good morning, everybody, and happy Thursday. Okay, so today we're going to start painting on Airship 27. Um, but first, obviously, let's go over and warm up um, before we get started. So all of you guys who are with me here for Airship 27 or just to work on your own, we need to go over to the other table or the other desk and warm up. So, let's head on over. All right, like every day, I do the same thing. I've got a couple of tools here that I use. Um, and I'll bring them all out for you to see. These are the things we use for warm-ups. Um, you can use a normal piece of just standard copy paper. It's not a problem. Any ruler will do. I happen to use my dad's scale because he was an engineer and I like using his skin. You'll need a fine liner, which is just a fine tipped pin of some sort, preferably a felt tip. You'll need a pencil and you will need a round object. You can use anything. I've used tape rolls before. I've used this guy before. I like to use these French curves because it gives me just a little bit of a different, different variation on the, on the curve of things, so not that big of a deal. And here's what we're going to do. We're gonna take the pencil and we're gonna draw two lines. One right here and one right here. And then we're going to do a couple of broken lines like so. Let's hope that's not somebody telling me that I'm not online. Because sometimes I get messages right off the bat saying, hey, you're not online. You're determined. Hang on real quick while I go get George. Look, George, I'm serious. I do not want you back to So there is a little gap back here. It's right over here, you can't see it, but there's a gap between my bookshelf and the wall. And I've got this huge armoire, which is right up against it. George has discovered he can get back into this little sub corner back here and nobody can get to him. Well, I don't like any place where a cat can get where nobody can get to him. So we did one of those, we're gonna do one more of these, and we're just gonna do a start dot like this, and an end dot like that. Then over here, we're gonna go like this. These long lines, we're gonna do some long lines right through here. And then down here, we're gonna put in just some curves. Over there. French curve. Right? Just some lines for our French curve. Now, somebody, I won't name any names, but he's got paws stepped on this paper with wet paws after he had stepped through this guy or this guy. Okay, so now we're going to take the fine liner. This is just a, this is not my normal fine liner for this job or task. Where's my zero for? Went back in here. Okay. Take just a normal 0.4 fine liner. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna trace these lines. 
When we do, we want to keep our elbow off the table. So don't rest your elbow like this. You want to keep your elbow up. You want to keep your wrist up. You can guide with your pinky if you need to. Okay. I'm just going to trace the line. One, two, and let's come back. Three, four. One, two, and then we'll come back. Three, four. It's okay if you're not perfect. That's not the point of this exercise. We're going to do this with the long ones as well. Same thing. One, two, three, four. This is only a practice in control. This is practicing keeping your control. So the, the whole point here, so we do this every day. One, two, three. George has decided to be part of the show again. He decided to be part of the show. Okay. With these, what we're practicing here is not looking at our pin. So we're going to start here, we're going to end here, but we're going to look here. We're not going to look here. So you leave, you go to that end point. And it's okay if you wobble all over the place. Leave, go to that end point. You're just training your eyes to get used to that. That's all you're doing. Okay. Same thing with these curves. I am particularly bad at curves, so you only need to do one of each. Okay. And then we check the date. It's 422. Okay. We're OOH. All right. Let's head back over here. All right. So today's task is going to be on painting. And we're going to be painting the cover for, for uh, Airship 21's Silver Pentacle. I am extremely nervous about this job. This is my first real cover. And I'm concerned about whether I have the chops for it and yada, 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 and all those things, all the normal imposter syndrome things. But we're going to do it anyway, right? We're going to get in there and we're going to do this thing. Um, I sent out two different versions of the cover, one which was calm and sort of relaxed, and the other which is very dynamic and moving. Um, they picked the dynamic and moving one, which doesn't really surprise me because I like it the least of the two. <laughs> and that's not to say that they are wrong. That's to say that's just the luck of me and the way it works with me every time. <laughs> so... We're going to do that. I've already started doing some of the color work here because I've got what I call a flesh grid or what the art, art advice calls the flesh grid. And this gives me some nice solid colors to select from to get kind of an idea of what we're doing here. I've also gone through here and sort of done something similar to the background on the back cover here. So you can see right here, we've got kind of this, this I don't know what to call this top part, but I'm going to match it right over here with their sky, if you will. The drawing I'm basing solely off of the pre-sketch that I already did. Um, I did put together a, um, a sort of a setup rig underneath it with characters. Um, and Daz to get kind of an idea of where everything is, but we're going to have to modify it because, of course, they're all wearing clothes and things, whereas my ma maquettes were not. So we're going to go on ahead, and what we're going to do today is we're going to go start putting in 
all of the the color codes right so we've got flesh coat tones here and we've got this fire that i was working on here those are our two pieces so far all right so we're going to work in the flesh tone zone i'm actually going to go on ahead and bring up a new raster layer because what we're going to do now is we're just going to fill everything with sort of a mid-tone gray like this and that gives us sort of an idea of where everything is and i actually want that at exactly 50 percent. so let's try that uh, or at least close enough to 50 percent. there we go when we do the 50 percent gray the concept behind that is that i'm going to get all of the outline of this character and the entire front artwork off of this 50% gray. So I'm gonna go in here with this, the wand tool, right? And I'm gonna select everything. Then I'm gonna to go to the gray area and I'm gonna delete. And I'm gonna start pulling out pieces that are not her or him. See, it's leaking here. So now I've got an issue with that. So I'm gonna undo that and find the leak. I don't know where that leak is, so let's get that leak. And one of the things we want to make sure we've got going here is we wanna make sure we have absolutely sealed every last bit of this right so that we can come through here this was a fast drawing done quickly but that doesn't mean that we are any less we need to be any less careful with it so let's go ahead and seal it all up we may come back here at some point and change or edit this at any point but for right now i want to make sure that we're just sealed like all of the outside pieces are sealed. And look at her boot, sealed all the way up. Her dress is sealed and sealed across there. And this is not sealed right here. In fact, I think I noticed that with, with when I did the skin tones back there. So now we're going to go up here. And we've got everything is sealed up up here. And remember, all we're doing is just setting up the basics for this. This is a very, this is probably going to take us three or four days. So we will likely still be working, <laughs> likely still be working on this in a few days. So the fire, I'm not as worried about because the fire and the flames is going to be chaotic no matter which way we put it. So, everybody I've noticed has a slightly different method on how they paint. Um, and I've been trying to kind of figure out what my method is. And I think really one of the things I really like to do is just make sure I have something that I can cut through. See, now it's gone into his hand there. That's not sealed. Back up onto this layer, I'm going to seal up his hand. Like so. All right. Now moving along, what I have effectively going on here now is this. Now I'm going to have on the gray, I have just this zone, right? I'm going to take now. I'm going to take the larger brush size. Wow. I'm going to take this larger brush size and I'm going to wipe out all the gray that's in here for the flames because I really don't need it. All right. We're going to, we're going to do the flames in a different manner. They're on their own level. They are only, actually, these flames are not the final flames at all. I was just checking to make sure that my background looked and matched my 
my foreground or the the colors complemented right and that's really all i'm looking for here okay and in fact i'm going to well, there's no reason to do that <clears throat> okay Now when we have this, we can put this, this guy underneath the skin and the flame side. And we can start to see pieces of this coming together. And we can kind of get an idea of where our base colors are going to be. So knowing this, there's a couple of things I want to do. I'm going to go in here now on like his jacket, right? And I noticed that I'm not sealed there, so we're going to have to deselect again. And actually, let's go on ahead and just fix this problem. I'm going to take my G pen on black, or on this like light gray, dark grayish. And we're going to go through every bit of this on this layer, on my sketch layer, and seal up pieces of this and not seal up other pieces. His vest is going to be one piece. His shirt's going to be one piece. His pants are going to be one piece. So I'm going to make sure his pants are sealed up. Always an important thing, by the way. We're going to make sure that we've got no major holes in the sketch for, like, his coat. Because this is going to become something we're going to change colors on here in just a moment. Okay, we're going to do that. and then seal that up. His boot's gonna be sealed up here. Seal up his boot. Once we have the basic colors down, it doesn't matter what happens here at this point. So this seems to be going up and down, which is the way I think I would rather have it. So I'm going to clear that area right there and let it come back around but I feel like it should fold. Otherwise, we're going to not see it as well. All right, this should be doing that. That way it looks like her skirt's folding around, which it should be. And then this is his coat. So we want to make sure that we have that defined as well because it's going to come back around and be his coat in the background there. All right. Let me look to see whether his coat is sealed up front. It is. But let's go ahead and double check. We don't want to. No errors here on this. Okay. Now let's check her dress. All looks good here. looks like that's one unit. This is all one unit. Her leg is going to be one unit. Right? We'll not worry about that later. We go through here and we want to make sure her vest is sealed like so. And this I got confused as to what her vest actually does, apparently. So we're going to do this. We'll come back in, and like I said, we will fix pieces once we get this. We're just trying to get the basic pieces done at this point in time. There we go, just like that. All right. Now we've got kind of this stuff going on up here. That looks like it's pretty sealed. This looks pretty watertight as well, right through here. Okay, good. Now what we do is we do all the selecty stuff. I was hoping. It's nice. Some programs will always do Okay. 
go here. And we will just change the basic color of this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into hue, saturation, luminosity. And we're going to change its hue. Right. She's wearing a, a white blouse. Now, we want to remember sort of one of the things that's going on. No. I need to be up here in work. Work. This is this outfit. So we're going to have to remember how this outfit looks. So let's bring this up because that's this outfit she's wearing. All right, so. She's wearing a shirt that's going to be bunched up. We'll come back in and get that bunched up in a second. But when we look at this, this is definitely a dark, uh, dark color for her vest. So we will do that, and we'll do that, and we'll come down here, and we will say tonal correction. And what we're just going to do is we're just going to do luminosity changes here. We'll come back for color in a minute. Once these things are different shades, all is good because then we can select by shade and it won't be a problem. But we want to start out by kind of delineating where everything is different, right? So kind of give an idea of where things are different on this, on the, on the character, right? We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to come over here and go up on this layer and we're going to select his vest. There's a leak in his hand. We didn't check that leak, did we? Okay. This means a fix. All right. Same thing, we're going to go here, and we're going to tonal correction, and then drop its luminosity, because that's a dark vest. His vest is actually darker than hers. Even looking here, this is a different outfit, and I'm going to actually put him in the outfit that he has when he's walking around. So he's in a different outfit, not this outfit. He's just not leaving her alone. George won't leave Dove alone. And he was wearing a... All right. The other reason that I'm doing this, by the way, this gray work here and doing this is that it's giving us something that we can use to trim when things, when we get towards the end of this. Right? We're going to want to trim around things as I do uh, different color groups and things like that. So we want to make sure we can trim this. So 
We're going to try and tonal correction you set and make this a darker shade like so. We'll come back in, like I said, and make color for it at some point. And then the last thing I want to do with him is grab his boots. I don't see anything else in his boots, so we'll come back here to tonal correction. And we will make this guy a little darker as well. We're on the wrong layer. Layer check. Okay, now we need to make her skirt and tag it in the right color. So we'll do that. No. You're not helping. Okay. The question is, did I grab this open area? And I think I did, which means that I don't care. I mean, frankly, I really don't. Okay. Now, when we look at this, she's got a lighter gray closer to the color of her skin. Um, so we're just going to move that over a small amount. like so. And we'll come back for this in a bit. That noise you just heard was Sticky Keys saying, do you need assistance? No, but you guys should have something that says, I hold down the shift key a lot. <laughs> and not because I'm, I'm needing assistance. Thank you, though. All right, now what we've got on layer five is some base color units. You can see how we've got these kind of base concept colors coming in here. And we've got the sketch is still under it. So I'm going to turn off all of this so that we can get just to our core colors, right? Because we want things like we don't need this sketch piece right here to be telling us anything because we just want to do the work with, bring the brush size up. All we want when we come through here is we're gonna want anything where it changes color. Right, so this is a change of color, but this isn't. Right. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go through here and just tap to here and then tap to there and tap to there like that. And then that would allow me when we get to this point, I remove that. There we go. What this will allow me to do is take the fill tool and go bop, bop, right? And I'm just going to, that way I don't have to draw it all. Right? It's just gone. What we're looking for now is just values. We're looking for just the values. I can go through here and get rid of all this because these are part of the flames that we no longer want on this outside section. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for her vest. 
going to make sure that we're cut off from there and cut off from there. And there's nothing else really to work on here. Undo and go through here and cut off that. Cut off that. And make sure it's not touching his hair or her skin. Right? We're going to then just come through here. We should be able to go tap, tap, and that goes away. Same thing I would say right here, but I can already see we're going to have a problem right there. So we're going to go in here with this guy. We're just going to go across like this because this is where that is. Undo. I spilled ink. Once I'm certain that this isn't going to spread across here into this, into this section right here, I'm going to do this, right? And once I know it, that's not going to spread, then I can go through here with this guy and tap in, and that finishes that, right? And tap that. That should be fine. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point in time. We are just setting up sort of parameters for this painting. All right. Move down here and do the same thing for him real quick. Now, this is his leg and this is her arms, or her uh, skirt, so we want to make sure we've got kind of a delineation of that. This is just overflow, it didn't quite make it, right? Because when we go through here and fill this in, we really don't want it leaking into his boots down here. All right, we can go through here and just tap that, and tap that, and tap that. And his boots end up kind of getting into this mess as well. That's okay, because I don't really care at this point in time, because we're going to come back in and work on that later. I'm going to just clear that up, make sure that that's clear. Okay. We want to make sure we've got all of the pieces, parts going on here for his coat as it comes out there. This is going to be our universal guide. So once we're done with all of this, it's going to just tell us where everything goes. I love flamenco guitar. I mean, it does definitely evoke Spanish Castilian Spanish culture, and it just makes you think, you know, of Spain and I don't know. Which is funny because I think Mexican culture also takes the steel guitar, and I don't know why I, I think of Spain every time.
Alrighty. We're getting very close to having this finished. Uh oh. I think I saw pieces of this going the wrong way. I did. All right. Much closer. The two things we need to do is we need to go through here and do this. No. Yeah. One thing we don't want to do is that. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And we'll just take this last little bit here. And we will do this. All right. Now what we have is our base colors. Okay, or our base tones, however you want to call it. But I can now take this and sort of start dealing with blocking in things. Um, you know, for example, now I have their faces in there too. Uh, so we can kind of start working on blocking in pieces, parts, and bits and pieces of this. I don't know where my camera is, so I'm looking over here. Hi, camera. That's where I think your camera is. I, I, I even have a light on my camera in order to specifically attract my attention and make me go, huh? Oh, here's the camera. Apparently, that's just not good. <laughs> So, anyway, here's what we're going to do. Now that we've got the base down, these are our base colors. We're just sort of kind of getting an idea of where uh, the, the raw base colors are. I'm going to make sure my skin tones flatten out to that, but I'm not sure I'm happy with her skin tones specifically because I feel kind of like they are too yellow. But one thing I can do is on the gray, select that, and then come back up onto skin tones here, select this. And I can go back in now and just make sure that all of this is going to be one color, right? I mean, that's just, if we're going to do this, do this, right? So there's that. We're going to do the same thing over here. Take that right there. That got even inside here, so I'm going to have to be careful with that. But at least for right now, I can get the fingers out here. The phalanges. Right. And the reason I'm doing this specifically is because in reality, what we really should be doing, I should have done this before and didn't. What, we, what we're going to do is we're going to take these sections here. We're just gonna make sure that they're all filled in, right? Like that, that's all. That's all. We can go back here and I can grab everything in this zone, which is going to grab literally everything and that's okay but what i am going to do here is make sure that his skin tone goes all the way out like so also make sure i have the right pin and we're going to come back and deal with that later i'm not that worried all right already kind of looks cool in its own like weird way i mean it does it does kind of look cool in its own little weird way so we're going to take these two layers and we're going to merge them together because these tell us 
a lot of data and information about what's going on in the colors. So we're going to do that. We're going to merge them. And now this is just one unit, right? And the good news is now we've got different, all the different sections of this squared away. You can still see the artwork here is like this. So we've got all these different sections that we can work on. It's all good. Okay. So if you turn on the cover, you can kind of see now where our composition is, right? And how our composition is going to work. And this is important because <laughs> we're going to start deciding some important things. Like I want to figure out what my colors are for all of these things. So let's look at the original dress she's got on. Right. If I look here, this reads to me to be a mid shade, um, maybe a blue or plausibly a green. Uh, let's let's take a look at our color codes that we're going to have to deal with. Right. This is the offset code color we're going to have to deal with. And as I was explaining yesterday to my class. Let's talk a little bit about the color wheel, right? I did this color wheel yesterday. I'm very proud of this color wheel. It's a very nice color wheel. That's very cool. Anyway, let's discuss a little bit about what we've got here. Our background sits right in here. This is where our background is really hanging out, is on this side. So its offset's going to be over here. Everything that we want to stand out or pop is going to have to be in the oranges or reds. And I know that. So the question really is, do we make her dress brown? Um, or do we make it a red? Is it a mid-shade red? Well, a mid-shade red would be pink. I'm not sure I want pink. I mean, that's not a bad color per se, just not really steampunk. And I feel like this is a very steampunkian story. So let's go onto the web and look for some standing in inspiration and see what happens. So I'm going to go on ahead and just pull up steampunk dresses. Right. And we'll get kind of an idea of what we're going for here. I do see literal red. So red is not un unearthly or here, but I do see a purple. I don't think a purple would necessarily go. do like this. Lots of whites, which will end up being pinks, and browns on the outside cover, but really I think we need red, red. Red, 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 red. I love this one. This is the inspiration dress that I used for the one where the gal is standing on the bow of the ship pushing wind into the, into the sails, which I thought was really nifty. Um, this one's cool too. If we were to, although it's creepy, there's no legs. Um, if we were to take and go for a red corset and plausibly, um, you know, like make her vest red and make it act like a corset, that could be cool. So we could do that. All right. But I think I'm going for a maroon or a red, a darker red. So let's go ahead and pick that color. All right, we want a darker maroon. We're just going to go in here and do that. Okay, that's going to look pretty dramatic up against that background. Not a problem. We'll fix that. It'll be fine. But I also want to then talk a little bit about what we're going to do with her vest, right? I mean, should it be more of a fire engine? Maybe. I need to make it a different color 
at least for the benefit of the start of this so that we can make sure that we can select it again, right? And then she can wear white. Now, I feel like maybe these colors are reversed because we look here and her vest is dark and her skirt is light. So maybe we'll reverse those colors. Okay. Maybe we'll take this and put that there and take her vest and go into this maroon, this deep maroon, like so. And we can work with this a little once we get there. Right, we can pull this through. Okay. Next thing we need to make sure we do is his coat. So his coat is a brown. Did we just decide that these two colors were close enough that you were going to just choose them together? That's nice. Let's try this again. That's reasonable. And we got a little tab out here. For his coat, I'm going to open another tab here and then say steampunk on coat. Looks like it could be gray or black. But it could be brown. Hmm. There's some good color choices here. I mean, this gray one looks nice. And right, this guy looks really nice. Something with buttons definitely would help. This is cool because I like the buttons, but it also has the cross buckles to go in front. All right. Again, we could go red, but I feel like his long coat's black. I feel like we sort of established that somewhere along the line. So I'm going to take, and instead of making it black, 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 I'm going to make it brown. Um, just give it some color so that there's some deviation here. Gives him the doctor coat. <laughs> we'll darken it down when we get into that stage. But for right now, this is where we're going. All right. Now, with his pants, he doesn't have to be as flashy. Men don't dress as flashy in steampunk as women do. It seems to be part of that culture that the men are generally calmer and cooler and, you know, more... I do like the idea of him having britches that are, but we're going to spin everything to the warm. And there's a reason for this. We're going to the warm side because that background is so cold. That background's blues and purples and like an emerald green, which are very cold colors. They're, they're cold. So we're going to spin everything to the, to the warm side. Everything's going to be a brownish color or reddish color or yellow or you know we're just going to stay away from the blue colors as much as possible so all right this is our color template right here now, one thing we haven't dealt with is her boots i noticed that i didn't even mess with that and i should have but that's okay what we're going to do is this is going to be inviolable so we're not going to be able to take 
and damage this sort of silhouette because I want to be able to come back here at times and be able to select everything in the picture like this and then go wipe it out and clean it up or whatever. And actually, I'm going to make sure, because I can see already we've got like particles here, that there's nothing here. I don't want anything outside of here. I really don't. So we're just zapping all these little dots that are appearing all over the place because I don't want them to be part of Man. all these little dots. We're just making sure that they are cleaned out so that there's nothing here to select. Still a little bit there. I need to worry about. You are just determined. Whatever that is, you are determined to keep it. All the little bits and pieces and things. I'm not sure what to do about that. So literally go in here and just do this. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this guy off and give a new layer. And in this new layer, we're going to do absolute black. And what this will do is make it easy for me to see errors like so. Whoops. <sighs> this is a tedious part of this job. more tedious when there's no control. There we are. This is a tedious part of the job, but it's worth it because what we're doing here is planning ahead, right? We're planning ahead to make sure that we have the ability to trim out pieces once we get to that stage. So that's what we really want. We re what, that's what do we really want? We really, really want. Okay. Right. We want to be able to trim down into this stuff. And say, once we've painted in here, and let me show you exactly how this works. All right. We've got a new layer, let's say. And I'm in here working on this. And we've got this layer set for a colored dodge. All right. So we're just getting highlights in here. God, I hate it whenever I select the wrong pen. We got the we're going in here and we're gonna do this, right? We're just we're just doing some some of this work here. We're gonna go through here and just, you know, we're we're dodging in and, and stuff like that, and we're just kind of you know, making this work like so to give just a little bit of, 
you know, whatever. Well, if you look at it, we've now burned all over the place. It's just made smudges there. <laughs> so you can take this and you can go like this and you go up onto this layer and you hit delete and we've trimmed it all back. So planning ahead helps us a whole lot. More importantly, we get in here and we realize, oh, we've burned into this section too, right? Wow, we didn't mean to do that. I can select this and do the same thing. You just go up here and hit delete and that goes away. So this is planning ahead to give us just a little bit more of a luxury of what we're going to do once we start working on these, these zones. At some point, I'm going to kill the zones like this and just keep the outside edge so that we don't have to worry about it anymore because there's going to be things like I'm not going to decide this is what her hair looks like. We're going to go back and have to work on her hair because her hair can't look like this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so we know that there are certain aspects of this that's going to have to be dealt with. But not today. Okay. So we're going to go through here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to go through. We're going to just... Because so. if we look at the original picture, that's flat across. So this guy is going to be like so. And we'll come back out and we'll floof it and stuff like that so that it just has a little bit more. And that's a technical term, floof. That's what my cat is, is a floof. Okay. We're going to have to go back in and figure out what the heck is going on with that face and i may actually have to go all the way back to my original drawings uh, my original sketch on this because whew, she looks like she's like 12 or 20 or 2000 years old here and i don't want her to be 2000. and it's because of the lines in the face so now we've got our base on this is the base we will duplicate it all right, and then we'll take this layer and put it under here so I will never, ever accidentally screw it up ever, ever again. Right? This is our color base right there. All right. Now it's about time for us to take a quick break and stand up, and then we're going to get to work on this thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So everybody ready? We're gonna. Alexa hasn't figured this out yet. Okay, everybody, stand up and stretch. And pivot and pivot. I have a new exercise bike. It lives right there. It's very cool. I'm very excited. We'll go for a little walk. We'll walk around the office a little bit. Come back in here real quick. I actually am going to real quickly see if I can't find one of my uh, what you doodles? That's a technical term, by the way. If you're wondering well, what you doodles are, they're technical. There are. Uh, you go over here. We look in here real quick. There we go. That's what we're looking for. This is the what you do. See? She already knows that I'm supposed to take a break. Take this guy. Try to plug him in. Put him right here. And this will be the power cord for my my. There we go. Now I've got something to watch. I can look outside while I'm exercising. This is going to be great.
Now it's time to come back to work. All right. All right. We're going to take this color base that we've already built and we're going to get to work on it. Okay. We already know we're going to use the concept here. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my original sketch. And we're going to do this with the original sketch. And we're going to eh, maybe not multiply because I can't see enough of the, the original. There we go. Now this is going to become the base for our colors. Because I'm looking at her face there and I'm like, I don't know about this. This doesn't look right. So what I'm going to do, so I'm already in here on this. All right, I'm already going to do this. We're going to take, I'm going to put this, the uh, skin brush down. All right, I'm going to, I'm already in on, on the skin, kind of working on this zone. So let's, Went ahead and when we when we darken or lighten the skin, we want to go in a catty corner motion like this. You don't want to go straight up and straight down. We want to go in a catty corner. And the truth is, we want to darken the skin and shift to the blue, right? So towards the blue side, which may be over here, it depends on where you are, but shift more to the blue, right? We're going to bring this zone through like this and more like so. I'm establishing that there is light all over the place. This is going to drive me crazy. And we're going to do under her nose here, right through here. We're going to bring some of her chin around, and then we're going to have this under area right through here. Right. And then in here is going to be All right, and then under under there, under her lip. Now we're going to shift the other direction. So we're going to go up in color and shift to the red. And that's going to be this side right through here. And then this side right here, and right across there, and right through here to kind of give an idea of what's going on right through this section. And then this, her cheek. You're like, oh my God, this is really ugly. It is totally ugly. We'll get there. I promise you, we'll get there. We're just defining the shapes. That's all we're doing right now. We're just defining the shapes. We'll let the, the, the rest of this just sort of be, and we're going to define the shapes. So where is the light side? Where is the dark side? Um, you know, what's going on here? We've got like her chin, and we've got stuff like this going on, right? And here is her upper lip, and here is the bottom of her bottom lip and it's curled up because we're looking up at her right so we're going to then come along here and then we're going to do this you kind of get the idea of what's happening here i'm setting up sort of just just the shapes you can see just the shapes here right i'm going to go through here right because she's got her eyes are wrinkled and puffed as we do this and we'll come through like this and it's going to be just across the back here like so right and maybe just a hair right there and then the tip of her nose right is going to be in the, in the light 
And it's not going to be totally like that. We're going to want sort of a crescent like that. All right. Okay. Now that we've done this, we have sort of the shape. Where's where's the shape of her face? This, by the way, looks a whole lot better already <laughs> than we had before. Right? We already have a it's a mess better. <laughs> so let's go on ahead and add another layer. And this layer is going to be my inking layer. So I'm gonna, but I'm never going to use black. Okay, so that's when we do painting, we don't want to use black. I'm going to bring this back up. I can see her eyes in here. We're going to put her eyes in. And why don't you want to use black guy? Well, I can barely see her eyes. Come down just a little bit more here. Well, let me tell you. The reality is we will darken or lighten as we need to. When we get to that stage. Now, notice I'm leaving a gap here. And that, this gap is going to be what we call waterline. We'll get into that in a minute. There will be parts where I'm going to actually put black in, but this is not one of them. So. If I take that away, it still is obvious what's going on here. We have her eyes are kind of going in weird places, so we're going to have to come back and work on them at some point, but that's okay. And I already know I need to do this. Now it looks like some kind of impressionistic painting, <laughs> which is fine. It can look like that. That's okay. I am not opposed. And then we're going to give her eyebrows right here. Right, and we're going to also then define in her mouth. Okay. And her nostrils, which we'll have to go back and find. Okay, now we'll take that out. And she looks concerned, worried, agape, something. I'll bring this back up to 100%. And now we've got 
at least the beginnings of that concept, right? Okay. Now that we're in the color section of this, let's go on ahead and clear out some key pieces. For one, we need to get her teeth in. Otherwise, this is going to always look weird. All right. And no matter what, teeth are always kind of a thing. <clears throat> All things that are white in our body are we always should start with a 25% gray and the reason is because no matter which way you look at it eyes are going to be 25% gray like this no matter what we're going to end up coming back in here at some point and highlighting it and darkening it because our eyes are not in fact perfectly white um, and in fact, when we get in here and start working on this, we're going to find that you want to put a highlight in, which will be white, right? And that highlight's going to be something that makes it look more real. And so we'll just tap in like this and then do like this to indicate the water underneath her eyes and then just a little bit like that and then we'll tap the scalia right there and then we'll put in um the the highlights in here like so and that looks a lot more realistic than if you were to just make those whites white so we'll do the same thing with her teeth right Yeah, it's not perfect, obviously. We still got work to do. But once we get some gradation in here, and once we get kind of the color set the way we want it set, we always, we'll come back in for the white on that. I'm not going to do that now, because I like to do my lights and my darks first. Kind of get a good solid idea of what I'm doing. So let's go on ahead and get in here and start working on this skin. Now, the best way to kind of make sure this all works is to select the middle grounds here. So when you take these pins, we did the highlight, we did the darkness down here. So we want to select through this zone, and this is going to be like here, right? And that way we can kind of take it easy on this because we're gonna need some darkness through here. We're gonna need some darkness like here, right? Because this is, she's got her mouth open. That's gonna put the depressors up, right? Not a lot though. We don't want a lot of that on those depressors. So we're gonna bring this around like so, and we're getting kind of better here, right? But think of the anatomy on this. We've got these indentions that push in and they go all the way up and around the the outside of the nose right here. So we're going to have to come in here and work on that. Knowing that that's our color codes here, we're going to come in and just tap dark. And we want to tap as dark as we can. And we're going to bring this brush down, way down. We're going to do this, right? And this indicates then the underside of where we're going on, the, on this guy, right? cheer and bring this up like so and there we go just like so and this is then going to keep going down like so right there's not going to be a lot in here in fact we're going to probably try to pick some of that right there and come back in here just a little bit like so bring some of that brown that dark brown that rich brown 
into this, this section of her nose. We're heading into a deep shadow right here where this is pivoted under, um, especially right here. All right, and then we're gonna go into this zone right through here. And we've gotta be careful not to overrun the red because there's a red redness to this. So I'm gonna come back through with this and then merge it, merge it together. So like that, All right? Now we wanna kind of discuss where some of this arcing section is so that, you know, where is her nose sort of coming across this zone here? And she's a Pacific Islander, so her nose is going to be wider and flatter as a lot of Pacific Islanders are. So you want to be aware of your anatomy there. All right, I'm going to come back up here. And her nose is probably going to be ramped just slightly. And here's the thing about this particular section right here where we're dealing with this pivot inside here. The older we get, the more these indent. She's a teenage girl. Because of that, she's not going to have a lot of indent here yet. It's not going to come around and indent as much. Um, now, even though in real life, if you go meet your local resident teenage girl, you're going to see a lot of indention there. We choose makeup and we choose various things that keeps this from indenting too much. So this is a fictional character, even though it's a ridiculous thing to think of. I don't want to give the impression that she's older than she is, so we're going to give her no real major indention there. And that is a cruelty to women everywhere, and I apologize deeply for it. However, I don't know any way to work around it. If I don't do it, she looks like she's going to be 50. She's not. Okay, we're coming around here. We're just going to darken in this section right up here to indicate more of a ramp. The shadow here, highlight here. That's where we are. Now I'm mixing the combination of tapping and selecting sections in between. So not tapping the light section here or the dark section here, but trying to find something kind of in between. And you can see where we're down. If you look over here in this section, watch what happens when I move my, my um, selector tool, right? We're moving into the darker sections and then into the lighter sections, right? So here's where my middle ground is for this. So I'm just going to use that. And that'll give me a little bit of, like, softening out. We've got to remember that it gets really dark right through here. And it's really going to get dark. And we want it to get dark. Yeah, that makes me feel dumb. How far have I been working on this ink layer? I'm going to take that layer out. I'm going to merge this layer in. Now this layer is now part of this. And the reason we're going to do that is because I'm not ready, ready to call these a complete uh, setup yet. Okay, right, coming through here, make sure that this is all straight, like so. I'm going to pick some of this here and just kind of come through like this.
All right, we're just gonna, again, it's another area where you don't want to get too pouchy down here because that's another thing that happens when we age is we get these jowls. So we have to be careful not to put those in on her. She's young. And so we don't want that to. Okay. So we're doing this. There we go. Like this. Middle ground. So like that. This just establishes a little bit of what's going on here in this pattern, right? It gives her some shape there. We'll come back in, and if we want to make color for any of this stuff, we'll get back to it, I promise. But one of the things I'm trying to kind of ascertain here is how flat did I make her face? Her face kind of looks very flat right now, and I'm really kind of not happy with that per se. So we're going to have to figure this out, right? I mean, I've got her... I feel like we're not getting enough of the bottom plane of her face, so we may come back in, and what we might do is this. Get a new layer, and we're going to color burn. We're just going to color burn everything down here on the bottom side. Right, and this will... And yeah, it's going red. I get that. Don't worry. A much more dramatic part of the underside of her face. Right? Now, if we bring this down quite a bit to there, does that help us any? Right? And if not, can we do like a, a darken? Right, well, that just brings the the planes of her face down. Okay, so I feel like the darkens not helping. Multiply might help me a little. Um, I get a better view of sort of the overview from up there where I can see kind of far away. It helps a little bit to try to kind of get where we're going with this. Now, she's got kind of i we'll have to come back in and kind of work on that a little bit. That's okay. This looks a little bit better. Um, I think one of the problems we've got is her face is clearly up, but I'm not seeing that in her nose. Right? So I feel like we need more of this. All right. We can go through here and kind of work on this. We'll come through here like this. Our little button nose is sort of like that. And then we'll come up here on this side like so. That's much better. That's what we're after. All right.
Now we're going to come through here. I'm going to peg down straight, like sort of like that. And what I'm headed for on this is to bring that area like so. And give it some shadow. Push it back. Now she kind of looks like she's got a broken nose, though. I have to fix that. And remember, my my motto on this show is one line can make all the difference. There we go. Now I feel like her nose is too high on her face. Now, I want to be careful with this because if I start to mess with things without going off of my original guide, things could be really weird. So we really don't want to do that. <laughs> so let's take a look at the original guide, right? I'll put this on multiply. Her nose isn't too high, but I do have the filth room too high, right? And that helps make things look not so good. Right, so we want to make sure we're bringing this filth room down and making it clear that it's down because it's not clear at this point in time that it's down. So let's make this much more clear right into this section right through there. And we're going to go on ahead and kind of bring this darker. and kind of clean this up a little. Make this merge in a little bit better. Now, one of the problems we've got here is that I have declared this side to be the wrong color. It needs to be more like this, right? We need to come out this side and make this side darker. There we go, more like that. It doesn't need to be this bright, but we'll get there. Now we're trying to define this inner plane very well. So we're going to define it using this color right through here. And as the nose casts a shadow this way, it's going to put all of this side of her face in a shadow. Not a big one, just a little one, right?
we're going to get to a point very shortly here where we're going to have to put this thing down for just a little bit, just so I can get a, a uh, an objective point of view. Because right now I'm seeing eyes that are tilted like this and things like that. That's simply this and this line not being lined up but I'm gonna have a hard time seeing it as time goes on. So we're going to want to get into here and sort of figure that out. So that's not a problem, we'll get there. All right. We're just going to go through here and we're just tapping this stuff up. And we're just kind of cleaning into the zone. Because though this is a bright zone and we want that all to be bright, we don't really need it to be this bright. And we can kind of go in here with the brush and just kind of tap in and declare zones to be sort of moving along or moving them along. We can also take this and go quite a bit brighter and get sort of a, a line across this side of the face, which will define our jaw a little bit more. All right, we're going to kind of come through here. And we're just defining sort of the outside edge of her face here. And that's what we're kind of going to do. We're just going to bring this around. This isn't the highlight. This is a, a medium light. Um, we're not quite at white yet. And then we're going to grab right in the middle here. Right in the middle. And then we're going to kind of just take the skin brush here and just right in that middle. Not on the other side, though because this is the side where the light is. So we're gonna come in through here and just do this. We're gonna just kinda of bring sort of that middle color in right through here, All right? And what that does is that gives a light, like there's a light coming from right behind her to one side. And we're just gonna put that in here. We're just gonna do, 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 do. Gonna merge that in. I bring that around, but not up into this plane. This plane is pushed back, okay? But this is given her, she's got this jawline, which is important because she's Asian-esque. So we want to make sure that she's got the, the jaws out and the cheekbones high because this entire structure is going to be like this all through here it's going to be up and over her skull is coming across like this and these these points which are right under the orbits of the eyes these two bones will sit high and they'll sit over and we call those high cheekbones but the truth is they're not that much higher it's more the fact that the jaw lines wide and the face is flat that causes that effect We're just going to kind of go through here and do this. We will come back in with a white at some point and rework all of this. But that time is not now. Here we go, just like that. All right. I feel like there kind of comes a point where you're fighting back and forth on colors. And like I said, we're just going to have to, at some point in time, stop and put in, put this to bed for the day and then come back to it later. That's what's going to have to happen very soon here because I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm like, hmm, not sure whether this is right or not. Yeah. As soon as you get to that point, you're like, eh, well, okay, it's time to put it down. Through here and kind of 
define across like so. And this this is giving a roll to the underside of her of her of her face. And kind of push this back a little too. All of us are descendant from monkeys. And monkeys have a very defined forward jawline that covers both. Of, so you can still see that in the humans. Humans also still have sort of this rolled section, which sits in like this. Um, and so you're still defining that zone. And if you think about the skull in different zones, we've got a plane that's here that goes this way. Then we have this inner plane that goes like this, and then we have these plates that go out, and then they come back down again. And then when they do, they form this zone that's around here. And it's, you can see it in all the primates. All of us have it. And it's an amazingly interesting structure through this <laughs> zone, which is covering her teeth and everything like that. So. You know, we've got kind of that thing going. So let's go ahead and we're going to take some of this darker color. We're going to come in here on the, on the bottom of her lips. Like so. All right. And then we just, we're just giving some detail in here. We're just kind of coming back around, taking some of this and kind of get a smaller brush for this and I kind of come in here and we're just gonna give her lips depth like a bow kind of going up and that's natural for younger especially younger girls we've got kind of more of a bow I think some call it a, a moo I'm, I'm not sure how it's specifically pronounced but Take some of this white right here and put it right there and put it on this side, like so. It gives a lightness to this. And like I said, this whole section rises up and it comes out, out, of, out of our face in a plane that's more like so. This entire section pulls forward and we have to give some variety and some depth it curls out it does not just go out in a straight plane like it's sort of showing here Yeesh. all right um try and get that and we're going to want to darken out her lips a little anyway but right here they're flat right up here they bow come out sort of like so and Asians have varying degrees of lips sometimes they have the dip into the filtrum area and sometimes they don't and it's that's one of the unique traits of Asians as far as like interesting things is when that filtrum area does not actually bow um, and I don't think I established anything in her before. I've established she has almond-shaped eyes. I've established this super thick curly hair. That comes from, that's very different than where you get mainlanders like China and um, Japan and Korea. They, when you start going south of, say, Okinawa and start heading out into the Pacific, you get a much more rich curly hair. Um, the hair starts to curl more. Um, and so you get a much nicer wave to the hair and things like that. What's really fascinating and always has been fascinating to me is you can see sort of an ancestry as we travel along the world, right? You get down deep enough into, say, where you're down into Australia 
and into New Zealand. And the Aborigines there start getting back to the very dark skin, which means they came across directly from Africa. But then they've got facial features that match more along the lines of the islanders that are just north of them. It is an amazingly fascinating thing to me because there's a lineage. There's a visual lineage that you can see in people's faces as you move across the world. And this visual lineage of just how our structures and our bones moved and things like that. And again, the thing that always astonishes me is the one thing that has not changed is the brain. Our brain has not changed. This is all cosmetic. This is just cosmetic. And it's so amazing to me. And cool. I mean, obviously it's cool because I keep getting into it. <laughs> so I'm going to raise her mouth up. I think if you're an artist, a lot of us, we have sort of a certain amount of anthropologist in us. But I think an artist needs to be sort of a jack of all trades anyway. We are always kind of looking at things or thinking of things or trying to kind of go somewhere with things. And it's, uh, to me, that's interesting. I'm fascinated. I'm always fascinated with people. People fascinate me. Okay. Now I've given this structure, it raises up like it's supposed to, to come out. I feel like it needs to come out a little bit more because she's younger and I want to kind of bring this around more. Um, but it's still going to get into this curve in here and it'll be fine. And then kind of moving underneath here is a little bit more uh, risky because we want to kind of bring this lighting area out. <laughs> But we really kind of need to bring this around more like so. There we go. The structure is all connecting now into one unit, which is good. I'm going to bring this under a little bit more like so. Now all of that's one structure, one unit, right? Now the thing I am going to have to fix is, it's just driving me crazy, this eye. And we're really just kind of dealing with just a little bit of, of push right here, right? And you can see how just tapping it just like that helps immensely. I'm going to move it out a little too. I feel like her eyes are... Not uh, not as far apart as I'd like them to be, right? So we'll then go in here. And I'll grab one of my brushes again. I like my skin brush here. And I'm going to just tap in here and just do, 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 right? Just kind of patch that up. Uh, I'm not going to get, I'm going to have to get closer on this one. Bring the brush size down to about there, tap in, and we'll go through like this. And this will be fine because we really kind of want to do this anyway. And we'll go, you know what? We can actually stay with this because she'll have um, a little bit underneath, like so. We're going to have to go in and do that anyway. Now we'll go through and clean this up, like so. All right. It's going to be a show of nobody today. And that's okay. I'll bet you, you guys are sleeping or something, which is totally fine. But if you are watching this on reruns today, uh, do me a favor and be aware that I don't always see the comments posted on this later on so just join me the next time and that'll be fine that'll be just fine i'm going to give her eyelash up here eyelid going up and over like so there we go
There. Now we're kind of talking. The gray hair isn't helping her any. We'll get that hedged in at some point. But at least for right now, we're doing good. Um, I think that eyebrow needs to move out with her eye. If you're going to move the eye, we got to move the eyebrow. Just saying. Right? So let's take this eyebrow and move it out. Like so. I hope that was that was save. That's okay. Save is fine. I need to save anyway. Alrighty. Alrighty. Go in here and tap in the skin. Just make sure we get this patched up. Like so. I was observing earlier that some people are still posting on my videos afterwards. And I was like, oh, crap, I didn't even notice. And, you know, of course, I've got to go through and figure that out. So that's all good, though. Much better. And we'll come back to this in a bit and fix it and make sure that it is totally ready to go. Oops, ready to go. But for right now, we have a face, and a face is always good, right? So we'll come back to it on uh, Tuesday and work on it some more. But I'm at that point now where I'm like, mm, I better just kind of stay away for a little bit and back away from this. So because um, if I don't, I'm just going to keep fidgeting, and I feel like we're at a point where it's still good and still viable. Boy, it sure does look foggy in here, doesn't it? Why are you not focusing? Focus. Boop. Eh, there's that. Really need to find something that's black and white. That'll help it a whole lot more. Okay. Well, good. We are here. This is a good spot to stop at. I'm calling it early just a little bit, but I'm also kind of hungry, so I'm kind of going downstairs. I've got meatballs and teriyaki sauce on rice. That sounds really, really good. So then I'm going to do my Japanese lesson and get on the bike and pedal until the Japanese lesson's over. So anyway, and that's where we are for today. I'm glad that you joined me, even if it's later on and it's all good, but I will see you all tomorrow. We'll have Pepper on and we will do an artist check-in. I may have actually kind of dinked with this some more. We'll have to see. I want to give it an hour or two before I come back to this picture, though, because I know me well, and I will get caught up in it, and then I will dink with it for eternity. So until, until tomorrow, I will see you all later, and remember to keep your eyes on the stars. Bye-bye. Good night.